moving now to the next uh, speaker, uh, we're going back to the financial sector. Uh, in the beginning of our conference, we had the Hellenic Development Bank. Now we're going to uh, one of the commercial banks, actually the largest one. It's uh, the uh, Piraeus Bank, and uh, it's one of our gold sponsors, and we thank you very much for your support. And we have uh, together with us uh, Dimitrios Dimopoulos. Uh, Dim Dimitrios is uh, the uh, director for the Sustainability Unit in uh, Piraeus Bank. Uh, it's another bank that's going a uh, transformation as we speak. And uh, he's going to talk about the future of uh, sustainable banking. Uh, Dimitrios, uh, thank you very much for being here at this uh, hotel studio again. And uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alice. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, in the next few minutes, I'm going to be sharing a story, telling a story, the story of Perios Bank's journey on sustainability, a journey which over the last couple of years has um, uh, assumed a, a tremendous uh, momentum. But before I start unraveling this story, let's have a, a closer look at uh, what is happening today uh, in, in, in the ESG milieu, what is happening today in the world regarding sustainability. The EU aspires to become carbon neutral by 2050. China aims to reach carbon neutrality by 2060. Japan is planning a higher clean power target. And political trends in the United States are talking about net zero emissions by 2050. The next generation EU is a, is a recovery fund of a, about 750 billion euros. 30% of that will be earmarked for climate uh, actions. And when you add another trillion or so from the EU, European budget uh, for the period 2021 to 2027, you can understand how huge these amounts are. And 30% of these huge amounts are going to go for actions towards climate. Global finance is transforming. By 2030, 95% of global assets will be uh, uh, incorporating ESG in their investment decisions. COVID-19 crisis has created notable ESG trends like new working habits, high sustainable performance, stakeholder relationships and pursuing purposes. All these are changing the big picture. In Greece, we want to become by 2028 totally decarbonized in our energy production. Greece, according to an article in Bloomberg, can become a leader energy transition in Europe. So, having heard all this, is there any doubt as to where one would think that our economy is going? Are there any doubts that there's only one way forward, and this is following the sustainability path? And when you think about that, and you add to this equation, issues that touch upon society, social issues, and governance issues, such as gender equality, social inclusion, job creation, eliminating poverty, and of course, the changing consumer mindset, then you have a very potent cocktail for sustainable development. Banks as intermediaries will play a cru crucial role in challenge ch channeling funds into the real economy and boosting innovation and low carbon technologies and practices. So let's have a closer look at what we are doing in Pirelles Bank. Sure you're online. Is it working now? Yep. Pirelles Bank is ahead of the sustainability curve. We were the first bank with a, an environmental management system that was certified under IMAS and ISO 14000. That's about a decade ago. We have reduced our energy reduction from the operation of our buildings by 22%. We save 5.5 million euros every year because of our environmental programs. We were the first bank to have a proprietary tool 
to measure climate risk. We know what the climate risk of our customers is. We were the first bank to issue green loans, and that's going back in 2008. We were the first bank that came out with a sustainability-linked loan in Greece, and that was just last year. We have the largest ESG mutual fund in Greece, and it's the first one with ESG criteria in its investment scope. We're the first, we have the first ESG mutual fund in Greece, investing directly in securities. And we have the first, and that was issued in 2017, ESG type covered bond, where EBRD, EIB, and EIF, the European Investment Fund, participated to fund Greek SMEs. We are also the only bank, the Greek bank, that created a couple of years ago, along with 29 other banks from all over the world under Uniper 5, we created the principles for responsible banking. These are the principles that are guiding the banks today on their sustainability path. We were also elected recently on the banking board of Unipify. So we are one of those 11 banks that will decide and coordinate the work of 190 signatories. Some of the largest banks in the world have signed up to these principles. Further to that, we have a very strong commitment from the top management, starting from our CEO, who has assumed the ownership of sustainability and ESG matters within the bank. We have created a robust internal governance structure with the participation of people from various hierarchical levels within the bank. And we have engaged as many employees as possible so that we can deliver on the commitments that we make towards climate change and towards financing biodiversity. And very recently, we came out with our clear ESG strategy, a strategy that is based on four pillars. Literacy, ESG literacy. We consider it very, very important that our employees, our clients and customers know about ESG, understand what sustainability is about. We want to educate and help create a market for sustainability within this country. Corporate performance is the second pillar. Setting KPIs, key performance indicators, so that we can measure our performance against the sustainability targets that we set. Producing, creating products and services that contribute to meeting society's needs as they are expressed in the, in the Paris Climate Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals, the 17 uh, global sustainable development goals. And our fourth pillar is the operational footprint. We want to manage and communicate the footprint that we have from the operations of our banks, the buildings, but also from the emissions that we, that we create through our investments. We want to, to measure and to, we want to promote volunteering. We want to uh, promote inclusion and, and, and diversity within the bank and avoid the problem of brain drain. So what are the next steps? This is what we have. This is what we've done up to now, but what are the next steps? We are very well on this journey and having a very strong commitment, which I just spoke about before, a robust governance structure and engaged employees. We were moving forward in formulating an action framework with a wide range of ESG products and services and enabling activities that will guide the implementation of the principles for responsible banking and our ESG strategy in the years to come. We have a very long and strong vision, a very clear vision where we want to go. We want to set targets, we want to set indicators, and we want to report in a very transparent way how we are moving ahead, what we are doing in achieving the goals that we set in going ahead on this journey towards sustainability. This is what I wanted to share with you today, just a few things of where we are going and what we are doing. And I would like to end on this 
note, the sustainability journey has really no end. And one would say, what makes you say that? Why doesn't the sustainability journey have an end? Don't we have targets? Yes, we do. But it doesn't have an end for one simple reason. Because there is no end to improving our quality of life. And we at Perel's Bank would like to be leaders in improving the quality of our life, improving the quality of our planet, setting the foundations for a healthy and sustainable economy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dimitris, uh, for this uh, very interesting and challenging presentation. Too many things I've seen, and uh, I know that uh, Pireus Bank has uh, like signed and committed to almost any responsible principles there are in, in the banking world and investment world, like global compact, uh, principles for responsible banking, principles for responsible investment, project finance. So. Um, what do you think will be the greatest challenge of all? We also see your four pillars of uh, your ESG strategy. Uh, is it culture, you think? Is it, is it going to be technology, your, your biggest uh, challenge, uh, uh, processes and uh, or uh, innovation, continuous innovation in the products? What do you think is going to be uh, the, the biggest challenge for this implementation of these uh, principles? I think that the biggest challenge will be to create the right culture that's why i mentioned in the beginning that we put a lot of emphasis on financial literacy on esg issues we need to have the people knowledgeable and engaged that is the first thing that you have to we have to uh, achieve and then I, we have to share and collaborate with all our stakeholders no bank alone can address these very complex issues and challenges like climate change, like loss of biodiversity. But if we work together, and we work together as peers, we work together with governments, we work together with our um, uh, shareholders, we work together with the investors, we work together with society at large, then we have a bigger possibility of achieving our goals. And this is what we want to do, and this is what we are doing. That is why we have signed up to a lot of these principles, uh, a lot of these, I mean, we participate in a lot of international um, um, initiatives uh, because we exchange experience, mm -hmm. we gain knowledge, and we can bring that into the bank and really make the bank the most sustainable bank in Greece, the greenest bank in Greece. Yeah. That is our So, so for, from, the, from, from the ESG, uh, we, we've heard it before that the most important factor is G, right? Where the culture is also. Eh? And uh, uh, lately, you've you've uh, just completed an, an organizational change, right? M making uh, in your corporate governance structure ESG as 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 the core now. Right? You want to talk about a little bit of this uh, organizational new structure and how this is now grouped? Because I, I can see that's a big challenge for many financial institutions. How they want to make sure that is going operationally across all the lines, right? You're very right, Michael, because that is the biggest challenge. That's the challenge that all the banks are facing now, uh, all those banks that have signed up to the principles of responsible banking. And uh, as I've said before, we are part of this uh, this group, part of this community, and uh, we are leading in, 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 in some ways as well. So what we see is the creating that internal structure, uh, having the right um, body, the right management body, having the right people in the right places is very, very important because you can't change the world outside unless you change the world inside. And in the bank, we have uh, created a very robust uh, governance system. This is um, coordinated by the Corporate Responsibility Committee, which is headed by our CEO. The CEO has assumed the ownership of uh, the principles for responsible banking and our ESG strategy. Then we have appointed all the um, uh, the heads, the top heads of all the major functions within the bank as responsible banking ambassadors, who in turn have appointed a group, a cross-functional group, um, which works together uh, in order to come up with proposals and set targets. And there's a smaller group 
within the uh, Corporate Responsibility Committee, which we call the Action Team. And they have the daily chore uh, of, of coordinating all the, all the people that are involved with, uh, with uh, implementing the principles and setting targets and, 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 and working and, and putting, putting, setting up this, this momentum and, and, and the pace so that we can carry and deliver on what we say. So yes, it's very, very important to have um, this, this internal structure. And it's very, very important that you have your CEO and yes. very much involved. And, and, and do you also link uh, like perforce remuneration and salaries and wages instead of just giving loans and continuously f uh, going through financial targets? Do you also have targets for ESG now? Is it in, embedded in, in, into the departments now? How does that work? Well, I cannot reveal a lot about what the next steps will be because we are in the process of, of developing such approaches and strategies. Um, it is very, very important that we do connect sustainability performance with the work that we are doing, with the core business that we are doing. Exactly we right. really want to make sustainability the core business, which means that in a few years' time, there will be no need for a sustainability unit per That's se, right. because it will be the heart, uh, yeah. it will be the actual core business of the bank. And the, this structure that you've uh, env envisioned, it's working because these ambassadors, the champions, they're going to widespread the word of sustainability across all lines, right? That is true. And we have already arranged uh, a high level meeting, internal meeting with the uh, ambassadors and the CEO. And we are uh, organizing a, next one, a second one too. And from these very, very important high level meetings where you get the, the heads of the major functions within the bank exchanging ideas and coming up with with, with new new concepts and new targets. And once this is um, uh, completed, then we'll be able to come out with a, a very specific target, and we will have measurable targets within the first uh, um, Q Q1 of 2021. Great. Um, that is what we're aiming at. Yep. And that's what we're striving to, to, to achieve. Thank you very much. It's also very hopeful the fact that uh, other banks also have signed up to this principle. So we make sure that the green banking system is uh, fully aligned. Dimitrios, thank you very much. For, I thank you, Michalis, for inviting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.